Hey everyone, we have two stride deck sets being released this Friday. Uh, and they're pretty pretty big, right? They're pretty pretty important because one of them's Lalan and one of them isn't. Uh, it's Shinui, which is also a fan favorite. But because they're they're such a big deal, right? I decided to make some preliminary deck list for them for just in case you want to just jump into it. Uh, when you crack open the deck, what else what other cards do you need? Well, you can try these ones out. These are actually a bit more complicated to make than I thought. Simply because there's so many good cards that you want to jam into the deck. For not just the Wad, but also for uh, for Shiranui. That, you know, you run out of slot pretty easily. And you kind of get into a bit of a jumbled mess at times. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's just kind of jump into the deck and start talking. I'm, I am going to kind of talk a bit more about some of these decks today. Uh, there are some alternatives to some cards as well that I might explain. But yeah, let's just get started. So first off, we have the Shirinui list. I'm gonna go through it by, you know, parts, just on why I put these cards in, the, the theory behind it, right? First off, it is the ride line, and even in the ride line, there are some edits you can make. The main thing is that I, for this deck, right, I have Genkai here, because Genkai itself is like not a bad card. This card will always kind of confirm that you have a target to dominate. It'll also make it so if your opponent gets a damage check, damage trigger, um, on the first dominate attack, you can kind of counterblast one and make give that card like give it give the next dominated card like plus 10k to kind of hit over it. Um, so it's just, it's kind of got that that kind of extra insurance just for your stride. It makes your stride games better, right? But there are alternatives. So the main one that people have been talking about is the Shoujo Doji. This will uh, make your kind of grade two game slightly better because you know you'll be able to call a card and also generate a soul. But I think the generating the extra soul is the key thing. Because this will give you one extra soul over the uh, Gen Genkai, right? Um, so that's pretty cool, right? That's pretty cool. But otherwise, we'll just go back. I think both are fine. If you do expect a lot more stride, you know, mirrors, then maybe uh, Shoujo Doji is correct. But I think both are fine. Uh, with the Obero, we are running three. Because you need to ride one. But then, because your main stride is likely going to be Mukuro. Because right, it's just so good. Uh, you do need to be able to Persona... Kind of strides you do need two copies of this which is also why i'm running like two of the uh two of the stride fodder as well it just lets you grab it from the deck get it out better triggers right which is great we don't run stealth dragon shunui because that doesn't actually work you need to be demon stealth dragon shunui in the card name to be able to uh stride into the uh the mukuro right the main the main lad so unfortunate stealth dragon is out but because of that we have some extra cards but i'm gonna i'll, I'll go through them later Let's kind of continue talking about the core of the deck, right? The core, other core part of the deck is the re-standards. So you're going to be getting, getting uh, Sekie, right? And then we're also going to be getting uh, Furai. Both of them are great, but one thing with Sekie is that it's secondary skill. This one requires two G-Zone face-up, so it will never work on the uh, first Mugen Tenbu Stride. Um, so that means the it will re-stand, but the things negated by the g zone 2 is the draw and the plus power so this is going to be kind of weaker on the first stride your first moving tempo stride which is why i'm only running three right and then on your second stride this will just hit big as well as draw a lot of cards uh we're just going to kind of explore your hand like crazy so uh, that's why i'm running three and i'm running four of the four eye because it has a similar effect it's still it's like a soul blast one stand when uh when one of your uh vanguard attacks and the dominated unit has attack that turn, right? It's still a soul blast one, but because of the first effect, it just gets 5k for each time a dominated unit attacks during uh, this turn. So generally speaking, you will probably get around like plus 10k from the first skill. So it will like already hit like decent numbers into your opponent. It will kind of help you push that damage up, all right? Or push your opponent's damage up. Um, and then after that, you'll have the sec DAs also give you cards which is pretty good. Uh, other cards that I've put in here, we have like three ten rays. This is your advanced engine. It's like basically you come into play CB1, draw a card, but when one of your dominated unit hits, you can uh, return it to your hand. So you can kind of recycle that effect. So these are pretty much the core cards. We're only running three ten rays, by the way, um, because you're gonna, what's likely going to happen is you're going to call like one or two, you're going to draw cards from them, you can't call any more, or might, otherwise you might get CB locked. We're not running any counter charges in this deck because, in a way, just learn how to use your counter charges better. The only counter charge, or the 
kind of blasts better. I mean, the only kind of blast you use is the Tenrei and um, should be the Mugen Tembu as well. So those are the main two cards. Also your Genkai, if you're running the Genkai. Those are your main main cards that will use CB. Uh, so just use them better, right? Just use them better, but also uh, just the game will likely end by then. Like, but, but it's like a second stride, right? So well, ideally, that's always the target. So you don't really need that many Tenrei. You're not gonna spam spam them out because you never have enough CB to be able to like, draw cards from them. Uh, so yeah, I think three is fine there, and that's pretty much like the core of the deck. The extra cards though that I've added in, some like when you look at the deck, some requires you to you know, uh, you know generate more soul, for example, and that's pretty much why I've put in not just a uh, Shenry. So this one uh, kind of does a bit of everything as long as your opponent has one or less regard. Uh, or you've played an order, but you don't play orders in this deck. Uh, this unit gets like 5k, so she's like a 13k beater at the end of battle. You put her into soul, and then you draw a card. So a bit of, you know, a bit of everything, right? But mainly generate soul. But also, that's why we're also running three Forktails, because Forktail will pretty much, uh, you can commit early, uh, stuff something into your soul uh, from the top seven, and then just kind of attack with it and not feel too bad. She doesn't plus, though, which is the unfortunate part. One card that does kind of help you out as well is the Brachio Force. This is like, you've, you've probably seen this card everywhere by now. Uh, but yeah, on hit, retire a card and draw a card. Very nice. Retire one of your opponent's cards and draw cards. But you, you have like this, at least a 3-3 kind of decent early game. Put on some aggression. Uh, and then this is also complemented by this dragon. So I think it's Pry Pry Pryoviz, right? But this will ha actually help with your Shenry skill because it has an on, um, has an on play effect retire effect it's retire when your opponent's regard you know that does help but mainly it's here just because when you discard it for stride or uh or when you ride when you I think so when you ride the grade three you get to draw a card so it's basically like your your barley replacement your stealth dragon shear and replacement because it does that extra kind of thing and does have some synergy with the shenry right so just kind of stay uh keep your opponents at low regard because you also have like megan tembu your dominates and all that can kind of get some extra retires in so that's pretty much it. Now, the rest of the deck, we do run one of this, or one of this, this top Garnet, Garnet, right? Extra defense is always nice, especially in the early game when you're running a deck that's you know, inherently a bit slower, uh, but also can draw your card if you really <laughs> want to. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all the kind of text I've kind of put in. Some early game stuff, some soul charging stuff, your restanders, and uh, yeah, some extra defense there. So that's just that's kind of how it works. I guess you're annoying, like, you, in my opinion, you shouldn't be that afraid to put in like things like back your force and all that that don't restand because by like the base amount of attacks the Shirunui deck is already getting is like two dominate attacks usually, and then you have your three your normal three attacks it's already five attacks without committing anything and then after you get the restanders then it's gonna get even more and more right so um lots of synergy there i think shinui is like pretty crazy what well, i've seen another thing as well where like you can replace the red ot or you can place drag vader with like the red ot because then when your opponent's mukro uh, checks it or when one of your drag uh, uh one of your um drive checks checks it which you do get a bit quite a bit amount you can kind of put the red ot on like one of your restanders i guess and then you know it can that card can like restand like quite a lot of times if you put like any crits and stuff on that you put it on that card and then suddenly you know you have like a, a critting machine that keeps on standing he's very annoying right so yeah pretty interesting there but otherwise uh a bit of like i'm hardly running four of anything in this deck right it's just a bit of a mishmash of just kind of good stuff that somehow work together, right? Somehow work together in some way. So let me know what you think for Shirinui, but next let's kind of move on to Luad. So onto Luad here. This one is also pretty interesting ma to make. The idea I went with this deck was that you can play Luad like kind of like a toolbox deck, which is what it kind of did before. You just had the on-ride ability that can kind of uh, search stuff that you needed for the turn. And while before you might not had anything on the field and you're just screwed, but now you have ways to like uh, call a card onto the field and then use like Luad's effect. So first of all, let's kind of break it down again. First off is the ride line. Leofile is really, really good. Uh, it 
basically just kind of confirms that you will always have a card to retire uh, for Dragheart skill. And for Dragheart, we're running three of this guy because although you do get to ignore stride costs, uh, you do still need Luards for Drag Strider's skill, uh, which needs you to discard a Luard. So you can't cut it down to uh, just one, but keeping at three is fine. And then, you know, if you need more uh, more strides, more Luard strides, you can still return them back with Luard's ability to free stride, and then you can kind of search it out with like an owl. So you can always have that setup going, um, which is very, very cool. Right, it's very very cool so that's just that's just the ride line some of the key, other key cards too is that we have four mephesses this is the main multi-attack of the deck uh and it's also not once per turn so if that's why we're running the red ot by the way you see him so if you ever trigger this and you put on a mephesa it means that you can kind of like call and like do this effect twice which will mean that you get more attacks which is pretty pretty scary all right uh so mephesa at four and then Abyssal Owl at 4 as well, because it's just a nice kind of Luard searcher, but also lets you counter charge, and it's, it's a ritual card. So it has a bit of everything, but the counter charge is pretty important, I think. This deck doesn't really require that many CB, but I think there'll be at a, there'll be a time where you're just missing one CB, and that would just that Abyssal Owl will uh, really help you out. So what are the other stuff here as well? So let's kind of start from the top. So we've got the... Uh, the Clouds Dragon, is it? Saram Clouds Dragon. So this is basically the this stride, kind of this, this grade three pseudo stride fodder where you draw a card. But you're not really playing it for that. You're playing it for its ritual ability. You see, it's ritual three. It gets like 10k on your turn. So what you'll likely do is you'll call this from Drag uh, Drag Driver, right? And uh, it's from grade four. You, you call it from that on your first stride this is specifically here for like kind of the first stride turn where everything is rather weak this by itself it's 23 and then with the 5k from the crest will hit 28 so 28 is a very good number um well it reaches that level where your opponent has a two card guard this which is very nice then after that you just don't have to worry about it anymore but if you really want it after that you can again the wad you can always put back those normal units back into the deck if you really uh really like the other card that is interesting is this maple so maple uh, well, basically every time you stride maple will also come out and let you fulfill that uh that role of getting sacrificed by a drag hard skill right now you might say leofall already does that well leofall you do need to discard a card for it to come out while maple is generally pretty free it just needs to be in the drop zone and it'll just come out and then let you sack her and uh get more free cards the duo in combo as well this one does let you get back your ezras i'm not running that many though right just two is fine if i see it i see it if i don't need i don't right any of these true cards i'll basically go like yeah um if i see them in the game it's great for me but if i don't it's not the end of the world uh but otherwise the rest of the deck a bunch of ones and this is where the toolbox idea kind of comes in because you get your ones for each turn right each turn you have a set game plan and that's for the ones that you're getting it, when I when I thought about this, right, the painkiller angel, I'm like, man, this reminds me of you know the old school sword breakers where you just call two sword breakers out, soul blast, and just draw cards. Well, this one doesn't cash in immediately. It does set up some kind of formations or lets you kind of commit this a bit early because one of the things with Lord as well is you can commit your your hand cards early down and then just kind of rush with them. And even if your opponent like attacks into them or ties them, it's just feeding your ritual count. So this can kind of help with that as well. Uh, in just kind of the, the early game, right? And the rest of the ones that I kind of picked were uh, was Semius. So this one's actually cool because she's a 10k, uh, 10k person during a turn. So, you know, you can boost this 10k to like an 8k and just hit numbers and it feels really great. But also when it's placed during the, apart from in the battle phase, you get to look at the top two cards and pick one and call that card. And at the end of that turn, the call card uh, gets uh, retired. Right, but it does kind of help you build a full board for your drag strider which need, requires like five uh, ritual cards right on, five ritual units on the field uh, for it to use its effect this is kind of help you build that but you generally probably won't um use it like every single time so that's why it's a two when you need it you search for it bam it's out right uh next is just this angel this one's kind of just a 10k shield 
Uh, it does get kind of, it gets intercept as well, uh, but I'm basically only playing for the 10k shield and the ritual three. Uh, the problem with this card is that it doesn't hit big enough, right? Even with one crest, it hits 13k. Wow, that's like pretty much nothing. But defensively, defensive, it seems pretty good. That's why it's still in and just adds another ritual flavor. Last but last not least, it's the Luminosity Wizard. This one is like a come into play, get 10k. So that's pretty nice, right? His 18k by itself with a crest will hit like 23 or higher. But then what it can also do is that when it gets retired on the rearguard circle, um, if you have like the crest, soul charge one, and you give your Vanguard 5k. So this will work with Drag Strider. It'll kind of pump up the Drag Strider, a guard restrict effect by a decent amount. Um, but also serve as like a pretty decent attack. So I think that's kind of all the cards in this deck, right? There's like a bunch of very small little things that we can talk about. Uh, but this is why it's just kind of like how I see it. It's kind of like a Luad uh, toolbox deck to get the cards that you need uh, when you when you kind of need it. It's just kind of set up for that turn. Uh, yeah, I, like Pain Colonials, pretty much sword, breaker, sword Breakers, right? We can Sword Breaker? I can't remember now anymore. There's like, like the Shadow Paladin uh, 6k one. Soul Blast one draw, just the yeah, again, it's like a delayed version of that. Um, but basically, any any like normal unit that you need to use again, like because the ratio is like so weird, any of them that you want to use again, you just use uh, the wards effect to put them back into the deck, and then either just, just get them again, draw them, or just uh, yeah, it's <laughs> just search them out, right? Uh, so overall, like that's kind of how I look at the You can play this deck like much more aggressive, just because you're not afraid of losing the cards. Right? you're not afraid of that uh if they die they serve the ritual if they don't die that means you get they get to fight again just make numbers bash uh do well and i think you're in a pretty good spot right um but that's pretty much all the two decks i have this week let me know what you all think these are again these are preliminary decks don't treat them as the gospel but everything is like set in stone and there's nothing that you can change give it a try give, give even the weirdest ideas a try it might work out pretty well so that's it for me today let me know what you all think of these, I mean, especially I guess the Luad deck, right? It's pretty, it's pretty all over the place. One of them's everything, two of them's everything, uh, just because you can search them out. Yeah, let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you all in uh, see you all tomorrow, I guess. Right? Bye.